Meet you. I'm Phoenix Ali, and I'm one of the uh, producers on MOJ, Murder or Justice. And I'm here with Joshua. Introduce yourself, Joshua, and tell us a little about about yourself and uh, Crime After Crime. A beautiful documentary I had the pleasure of interviewing and seeing, and um, I was very moved. So, Joshua? Um, I'm Joshua Safran. I'm one of the attorneys for Deborah Piegler, uh, a survivor of domestic violence and, and a prisoner. Um, we spent about seven and a half years getting her out of prison, and uh, myself am a survivor of uh, childhood domestic violence, which sort of played into my role in seeking justice for Deborah. Okay. Uh, let me ask you, what was your inspiration for Crime After Crime? What really touched your heart to get you to put nine years of your life and everything basically on hold during parts of your life? I mean, your child was born. I mean, a lot of beautiful things were happening to that time, but it just, this case just captivated you enough to just stay in it for the long haul. You know, Deborah was uh, a very, very charismatic person, and she also was someone who had lived uh, a life that somehow had been failed by society at every single step of the way, by her neighbors, by law enforcement, by um, the judicial system, by the prison system, prison medical system in every way, and I felt that her story, as horrible as it was, um, was A, a story that needed to be told, and B, was a story that actually wasn't that unique. There were a lot of Deborah Peelers out there, and that if we didn't shine a spotlight into what was happening in her case and in her life, then it was just going to remain swept under the rug and no one would know about it. And I think that's why a lot of people don't want to get involved when they hear the domestic violence. I think it's like swept under the rug, you turn the TV up, you don't want to be involved. What's your take on that? Well, I mean, it's, I've had you know, similar experiences. I once saw a woman uh, kind of leap out of the back of a moving vehicle in Berkeley, California, which is supposed to be this very liberal place. Um, the man, the driver came out as a man, kind of grabbed her by the hair and was, was you know, punching her and dragged her back into the car. And I called the police, I was behind them, I called the police, and they were very excited when I explained that a man was dragging a woman into a car against her will, and then they said, wait a second, she came out of the car and he dragged her back in? And she said, and I said, yeah. And the dispatcher said, oh, it sounds like they know each other. And, th and they were done. Wow. Because, you know, and I think that that kind of experience is common, that there's this perception of the marital bond or the boyfriend-girlfriend bond uh, entitles some level of violence and that's okay you know and I think that's that's a perception that you know has to has to be broken but the other thing and I think that uh, cops and law enforcement have been very well trained now with you know Miranda warnings for example right I mean every police officer understands okay you have a right to remain silent you have a right there's a checklist that can be memorized that's in, integrated into law enforcement training and I think one of the things that sort of I've, I'm interested in is working with law enforcement to develop a, a battering checklist at a certain point, are there certain things that you can tell, that you can check for, certain questions you can ask, and if you hit four yes answers or something like that, then you say, okay, this is a situation where we have to intervene and we have to get this woman out of this situation because otherwise, based on this checklist, it's going to escalate into greater violence or murder or something else. And if you know we hit no's, then it's a situation that we can kind of back off on. That way the police officer isn't placed in this continually awkward situation of having to decide do I get involved? Do I not get involved? What's the rule? What I don't know. Are they going to turn against me? They'll just be kind of a checklist that society as a whole we can agree. Okay, this these are the rules. If you hit four yeses, whatever it is, the woman has to expect that she's going to be removed from that situation. Law enforcement will be entitled to get involved. If not, then not. Something like that. I, I understand. Know. Well, Joshua, I want to thank you for your time, and I want to tell everybody to see Crime After Crime. Check out that documentary, The Deb LaPigler Story. It is amazing on how this was put together over nine years and the dedication of, of these two attorneys that just relentlessly would not give up when all odds seemed like it was against them. And I'm Phoenix Ali, MOJ, and thanks again, Joshua. Thank you. And looking forward to working with you. That's it. Thank you.